If you are not addressing your gut health, which is the root cause of what's going on there, that autoimmune condition, your symptoms have fixed in the thyroid, but that autoimmune condition is now going to spread to other parts. So people who have thyroid, uh, Hashimoto's and other types of uh, autoimmune conditions could then develop other autoimmune conditions. So now you're developing lupus, you can be developing rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. I have some questions for you. Hey, brave girl. Welcome to the Brave Talk Show, where we connect with brave women like yourself to laugh, to cry, and to roar about the topics near and dear to our hearts. In today's episode, we dive deep into gut health and why we should all be taking better care of our guts. It's a powerful episode, so if you like it as much as we think that you will, smash that subscribe button so that you can connect with us on future episodes as well. So we are going to actually first start with our favorite segment, our first segment. And today I'm actually gonna be doing something, I'm thinking it's not hard questions, it's actually like some good icebreaker get to know you questions that I'm super eager to like just hear from you. So we're gonna get started, I've got four. And what I want you guys to do is just give me a number and I will give you the question that it fits with your number. Then I'll answer the last one that didn't get picked. I'm Two. surprised okay. Brittany's not negotiating what she should pick right now. It's not hard questions. These are just get to know you questions. I'm not gonna ask you like your she deepest, darkest two. secrets or anything like that. I choose okay. three, four. All right, Robin said two, Vanessa said four. I said three. Three, okay, okay. so we'll go with Vanessa first. Number four. Number four, weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Drink some apple cider vinegar last time. Oh, that's episode. weird, that is weird. I don't like, I don't understand how Americans like cottage cheese. I don't understand that. Either. I love cottage cheese. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I taste that, and I think that was the weirdest thing I've ever eaten. Okay. Did Not it taste good? No. <laughs> it's just the texture. Yeah. Oh gosh. It's I grew up good. on that stuff. I would eat it with with uh, canned peaches. Me too. I loved it with canned That's peaches. That's what my parents said. Yeah. Oh gosh. yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. I can't I'm eat it now, and we'll talk about mm -mm. today on the episode why I don't eat it now. It's not good for your guts. Oh, okay. Oh. But, sorry. <laughs> Dang, okay. Stop eating that crap. Yeah, this is my favorite. <laughs> like, I love cotton. Why eat it by the gallons? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number uh, two. Robin, your question. Okay. If you could move to any place Ooh. in the world, mm. what would it be and why? Where would it be and why? Okay, English this teacher. is like so boring because... <clears throat> If I could She's choose anywhere. She's going to say anywhere. Utah. Yeah, uh, Sage Ridge, like Sage Ridge, Utah. I oh. love Red Rock. I love warmth. That I love funny. outdoor living. Like I want to live in a place where it's really warm all the time, yeah. but I'm still close to family. I love Utah because it has different elements. We have mountains. We have lakes. We have sand. We have snow. Snow. We have desert. Um, so that would say, I would say Sage Ridge, Utah. But if I had to choose somewhere yes. outside, then I'd probably somewhere like with a beach, like nice. tropical. Mm, nice. Yeah. All right. Kind of lame. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I don't no. think so. Robin, I think you that's are good. never lame. No, like never. You, Utah. I'm like, I want to go to St. George, Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't raised here or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're building a house in St. George. It's perfect. That's you're true. just manifesting wow, your you're dream. Living that is dream. true. Wow. I am building a house okay. in St. George. La question then for Brittany What book has influenced you greatly? Oh, I know what uh, you're going to say. What am I going to say, Rob? <laughs> no. I was going to make the rule, and it can't be the yeah. Bible or any scriptures. Like, you can't have hey, that one. Hey, Robin. Well, I was like, I know, I'm like, that is hilarious. It's true. I know, it is but true. That's not what I was thinking. No. Um, so the cute. book Self Compassion by Kristen Neff. That was when I was going to therapy um, years ago when I was doing, dealing with my postpartum depression. My counselor just like honed in and was like, Brittany, your problem is perfectionism and you're critical of yourself and try like read this book. And I devoured it and I've spent the last like six years becoming an expert. I wrote the workbook to go along mm -hmm. with it. And it's just like, I recommend it to everybody. It's Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff. Nice. Okay, I love it. Well, I'm gonna have to write that on my list because I could use some self-compassion myself. Yeah. All right, so the last question that was on here that you guys didn't get was what was your worst date ever? And so that'll be mine. I've had so many bad dates. Um, <laughs> but I will share one that I think was pretty funny. Um, I don't really know if I could say it was a first date, but it was a date. Um, this guy that I had met who was way older than me, okay, by, by the way, like, I'm sorry, these are my BC days, I was pretty wild. I was 19, the guy was 29. BC days. Like, 
Before, this guy was way too old me. Right? He yeah. should not have been dating me in the first place. But whatever. So I'm dating this 29-year-old, and we decided to go with some friends. I don't remember who was in the backseat. How seat. old were you? I was 19, and he oh, was 29. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. Already a bad a sign, to the game. right? Yeah. Um, and so we decided we're going to go drive to Vegas, um, and I don't know, like for the night, or maybe it was to like the. Um, we were going to drive to like a, the 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 border because I was in California. I was living in San Diego at this mm -hmm. time. Anyway. We're driving back. I don't even remember the time when we were there. It must have been unmemorable. Um, but we're driving back, and he's like, I'm driving, and he is just backseat driving me, like, the whole time. Like, you're driving too slow, or you're driving too fast, or turn in the right lane, or turn in the left lane. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, it was really starting to piss me off. Like, he would not stop. Like, just leave me there. So finally, I got to the point, I was so frustrated, I, like, pulled over to the side of the freeway, and I was like, you drive. Like, I'm so done. So he's like, fine. So then he drives, and then we get hungry, and we decide to stop at a McDonald's. Okay, now, I don't know how you guys would react with this. We're at McDonald's, and he's eating french fries and ketchup and, like, a, a burger. And I don't know if it came out of the burger or not, but this big glob of, like, ketchup fell out of his mouth and landed on the table of oh, no. the McDonald's, like, public Restaurant. table. And then I watched that man take his french fry and dip it in the ketchup that was on the table that just fell out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was so disgusted. <laughs> so she disgusted. never talked to him Between again. Between him yeah. and his backseat driving and then this nastiness. She was done. I she was done with this guy. Everyone I looked at him and I was like, in my head, I'm like, I am never I was going to be you like, again. you left like, it inside of the road. <laughs> and you know what? Like, I wonder, to the, like, I look back. Because I, I looked, looked at, I watched Facebook? him, oh, I don't even remember his name. <laughs> um, but I remember him giving me like eye contact after that. And I look back now as an adult and I'm thinking, I wonder if he did that on purpose. <laughs> like as a sexual thing? No, no as like a, let me say. gross her out because I don't yeah. like her either. Oh, like okay. I'm wondering, because of the backseat driving thing yeah. and then that. And it's I like, hope. I wonder if he did that just because he's like, I got to get out of this relationship quick. Let me do something nasty. <laughs> okay. I do, so she'll never want me because to Because I remember her. looking at him, I was like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not ever going to talk to I him again. Never that see was this it. Again. And I don't remember yeah. if I even like said goodbye. Like it was just like, <laughs> and again, I don't even remember his name. So That's there we go. Really, that would be a deal breaker for me too. Oh, yeah, uh -uh. absolutely. Me too. All right. Well, now we are going to dive back into the topic that we have for today, which is gut health and why you should all be caring about your gut health. Hopefully you are, but if not, I'm hoping to inspire you today. Yes. Um, as some of you guys know, um, my, my like Instagram handle is Mama Guts, so I love gut health. It's certainly not the focus of my channel, it's just my name, <laughs> but it is a passion topic. Um, and so um, I'm here for you guys to ask any and all the questions, and, um, and I'm, I wanna help you. I wanna help you guys all. Like My goal is that women take better care of their gut health because it really impacts so, many, so much of your life. Really. I want to say just before we even get into it, as you became my expert <laughs> this um, earlier, well, I guess last year now because mm -hmm. it's it's now March, but um, when I, like, I overnight gained 10 pounds mm -hmm. and was, like, freaking out because I'm, like, not literally nothing changed. I just got bloated, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. all of a sudden. And I was texting you constantly, like, what do I take? What pills do I take? And mm -hmm. you you got me t going on a, a great probiotic, which I actually just ran out of and I need to take more of or order more of. But you, like, you helped me a ton. So yeah. I'm excited for this. Well, I remember one of the biggest things with you that was kind of a big um, aha that a lot of people didn't know is that you were develop you were having indigestion and stomach acid. And you were thinking, oh, I need to take um, acid reducers. Mm-hmm. And well, it I was the opposite. Yeah, and I was like, no, no, no. If you have acid reflux, the the issue is that there's a valve at the top of your esophagus, and it closes when there's enough acid in your belly because it's it tells your brain like, hey, close this flap because there's digestion happening. We don't need anything up there. So if you're getting acid reflux, then you probably don't have enough acid in your stomach to turn that light on in your brain to say shut the valve, and and whatever acid you have is what you're feeling. So you actually need more acid. And so she I was like, digesting what? My I don't food. know, I don't know. She went, and I was like, go see a naturopath. Well, and I did the baking soda test. Yeah, and you didn't pass it. No, I, like I, so the baking soda test is where you drink um, just like a cup full of, or just like a little bit of water, 
with a teaspoon of baking soda and it. I, I was scared for it. Like I was like gearing myself up. Like I was yeah. gonna take it. It didn't. It didn't even have a taste. Um, so it's just a tiny bit. You take that first thing in the morning and then you set a timer. And if you burp within so many minutes, I think it's like five minutes or something mm -hmm. like that. Then you know that you're producing, you're digesting your food, and you're you're you have enough acid because acid breaks down your food to right, digest yeah. it. And I never burped. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I want to try this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a great because, home test. Um, what it is, it's it's a it's a, uh, it's a base. So if you actually have too much stomach acid, let's say you did actually have too much stomach acid, like say you had had a bunch of like apple cider vinegar or something, it was like, ah, you need to calm it down. Ba baking soda would actually calm the acid level down. You need acids in your stomach to digest your food, not just digest your food, but like break it down so that you can actually use the nutrition in there to help your body. It also like kills the bacteria that's in your food. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, you could be like, you could get gut infections. You know, you could have all sorts of issues. And be so, tired yeah. because I'm not getting the nutrients out of the right. food that I was eating. So she's putting this base in her stomach. And so what this test is doing is you're putting this base in your stomach. And if you have enough stomach acid, that acid will overpower that base. But if you don't have enough stomach acid, it's just chilling Ooh. out. It's a good so that's why I already have the test. Yeah. So she went and she saw an, uh, a naturopath and naturopath confirmed a lot of what I was saying. So I'm so glad I was able to help you. And yeah. hopefully after the pregnancy, we can see what I got to get back on, yeah. get back <laughs> on all those help. things. What causes mm. bloat? Oh gosh. Well, bloat can be caused by all sorts of things, but uh, inflammation is really the, the biggest. Um, and um, like if I eat wheat, Wheat is a, an inflammatory uh, food. So lots mm. of foods are infl inflammatory. And I would say that's one of the biggest problems with gut health is that we, in our American diet, we eat a ton of inflammatory foods. So what are inflammatory foods? Those would be like wheat, dairy, corn. Those would be the three biggest ones. Um, some might be like uh, some soy that could be in there as well. Um, some oats, especially because oats and wheat in particular, if they're not organic, they're heavily sp sprayed with glyphosates. And those, th I mean, that's like Roundup. That's all over your food. And so that's gonna add to it. So everyone's gonna be a little bit different about like what, what for you tends to like really inflame you than others. For me, if I eat wheat, <laughs> If I eat wheat, I look like I'm three months pregnant. Mm -hmm. I get bloated so fast. I'm not really pregnant, guys. I just say the hamburger, <laughs> yeah. right? So that would be one of the big causes is, is really <laughs> acidic or laugh. inflammatory foods. <laughs> um, like, and so part of gut yeah. health is, is getting rid of those inflammatory foods or reducing it in the first wow. place. Yeah. So how did you start with gut health? Did you have some gut issues or? Yeah, definitely. So if I were to trace back, I have probably been having gut issues early on. And, it, you know, it doesn't just happen like overnight. Uh, what happens is it's like a domino effect. So you get a little thing that happens and then it triggers other things and eventually you've damaged your gut, right? So if I were to go back as far as I can to my childhood, I had a lot of ear infections when I was a kid mm. and I had some weird allergy things that were happening with my skin. Yeah. So now I know that part of it was I was, and I was very constipated. I always was the kid that was just having a hard time mm. going number two. And my parents didn't know. They would just like give me suppositories. They'd give me like, you know, uh, medicine to help me go to the restroom and stuff like that. But they never, back then, they didn't really think like th that you shouldn't be this way and therefore there's something happening with your food. Well, now I look back, it was the milk. I grew up in the 80s where you had milk. You had milk for breakfast, you had milk, I, we had milk for dinner, like dinner and you had a glass of milk. Mm -hmm. That's just what you That's did, what right? Did That's what we did too. Um, and that was really messing me up. So I was growing up my whole life with milk, eating milk. I ate tons of cheese and drinking milk with dinner. And what was happening was I was allergic to it and I didn't know. So it was causing constipation. It was actually leading to congestion in my, um, in my, um, you know, my, my nasal passages mm. and so forth, which led to the ear infections. Mm -hmm. And then what did my parents do? God bless them. They did the best they could. They just only followed what the doctors said. Exactly. They would give me antibiotics, antibiotics yeah. and I was constantly on antibiotics. And so what I was doing was I was causing this inflammatory response in my body because it's like, we're allergic, we're freaking out. That's causing issues with my gut, leading constipation, it's causing air infections. Now I'm taking antibiotics. Well, what's the antibiotics doing? The antibiotics are killing everything. all the bacteria. And what we didn't really know back then was that you have a microbiome in your gut that is essential to your health. We have more 
microbiome bacteria. We should have more microbiome bacteria in our gut than we have like cells in our body. Like it is crazy how much we should be having in there. But when you're blasting it with antibiotics, now you're just, and, and, and what's the purpose of them? Those microbiome, they do so much. They clean up. They get rid of the bad things that are inside your body. A bad bacteria, it'll fight the bad guys, right? It will actually break down some of the toxins that are in our food naturally. Um, even the good things in our body, like your hormones, for example. You have estrogen and so forth, but guess what? Guess what, as your body uses the estrogen, it has like extra that it needs to get rid of and things that it has to get rid of in order to make more. Well, that gets pushed to your gut and your microbiome are supposed to wrap all of that extra estrogen out and get it out when you go number two. Well, if you don't have any of that stuff happening because you don't have the microbiome, right? Like you're causing all sorts of issues. Um, and so one of the other issues that started happening is with the continued inflammation that was starting to happen in my gut, one of the big things that are made in your gut is serotonin. Now, mm -hmm. serotonin we know is a neurotransmitter that's responsible for a lot of our feelings of mm -hmm. joy and, and, and uh, overall well-being. And we often think of serotonin as something that's in our brain, and it is, but it's made in your gut. So if you have this inflamed gut because you're not treating it right, mm -hmm. you're actually reducing the amount of serotonin that your body is making and actually making it so that less serotonin is going into your body. Now you're depressed. And now you go to the Doritos and you go to the ice cream and you go to the food that is, and then it's this vicious, vicious know, cycle right? that starts to happen, right? So what I had ended up happening for me is I, I don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna say it was all biological, but I did start suffering from anxiety and depression um, starting in my high school years. And it's been something that I've battled off and on throughout my life. So I know that I have a predisposition for it, but I know my gut plays a role in that, right? So anyway, all of that came to a head um, after I gave birth to my first son. So I gave birth to my first son and um, I was hungry, I'm breastfeeding, and I'm eating all of my favorite foods. Easy foods too. <sighs> Breakfast would include um, cereal with milk, mid-morning snack, cottage cheese with um, you know, canned peaches, um, lunch, a uh, sandwich with the slice of cheese on it, right? Afternoon, it might be a yogurt, you know? Mm -hmm. Look how much dairy I was putting into my body. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was the C-section that I had or the hormones that I was going through, but my body flipped out. And I remember my son was five months old and I was having such bad constipation um, that I actually developed a hernia. Mm. Yeah. And um, I didn't know, you know, but I just knew that like, I'm, I can't even like go to the bathroom, like it's not coming out. So I talked to the doctor, they ended up giving me a colonoscopy. I had my first colonoscopy at the age of 28. Oh. And um, they were like, yeah, it looks like you've got a little hernia down there. And they, they diagnosed me with the, uh, it was like torturous colon, uh, which was like your colon got twisted. And they were thinking, well, maybe that has to do with the fact that you had um, a C-section, like guts got moved around and so forth. So I don't really know exactly what happened that made my body just finally go, I am done, you are done. But it correlated with my pregnancy or my, my C-section and now all of that. Wow. So um, I went to this doctor and immediately he was like, okay, um, you need to start looking at food allergies as possibly what's going on. So got on a probiotic, got on some fiber, started taking some tests on some food allergies, came up that I had this allergy to, to dairy and to wheat. Um, and so I just started cutting all of that stuff out and I didn't cut it out hundred percent. I just cut out a couple of things and that helped. Um, but as I started getting older, I was probably between 28 and like 32, 33 is when I started noticing that the things that I was cutting out wasn't enough that I was getting now more sensitive to some of the other things that were happening. And so I, I had to start really digging into, okay, what is going on with my body? So I decided to do a 30 day detox. And I was with one of my friends who has this like 30 day detox plan and um, I went on it and really what it was was like get rid of gluten, get rid of dairy, um, only whole foods, you know, no processed foods. Um, I think we were able to eat meat but it was like only grass fed, you know, it was very strict and I did it for 30 days and I couldn't believe how good I felt and my mm. bloating was gone and this other weird thing started happening. I like, not only was my bowel movements like no longer an issue, but my bloating was gone. Um, I was feeling better. Like 
better like well-being, like more joy as well. Um, skin looking better, all of that. So then I, I like to test things. So after the 30 days, I decided, okay, well that was great. I, I did all that. I'm gonna start bringing some stuff back in. And I brought back wheat. And then what I noticed was after three days of eating wheat, I started feeling very depressed and anxious, like heart palpitations, ready to have like a panic attack, suicidal thinking. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So, you know, started looking into allergies with food or with wheat and or with any type of food. And I, I learned more about allergies and that allergies can actually affect your brain and all sorts of stuff. So basically in the end, I went on this journey and discovered that my gut, I I went to a doctor, got some tests. You can actually take tests where you can like have stool samples and so forth. And I'm not talking about stool samples that your medical doctor, your typical metal doctor will, will give you where they like check for parasites and that's about it. I'm talking like full in depth, like eight page papers where they're checking for um, how, how diverse oh. is your microbiome? You get, you get all this shit about your oh, shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they checked sure my, my microbiome. <laughs> like, what's my diversity of my microbiome? How much of my microbiome do I have? Um, you know, what's my, what's my, the walls of my intestines, were they inflamed? So is that's there one blood? of the things that I got tested mm -hmm. is, and they said that I had leaky gut. Leaky gut. So what where leaky gut holes is. all through my stomach yeah. wall. So all of my nasty stuff was leaking into my blood system. Yes. Oh so not only was I not digesting food. So that's food, the thing when people say leaky gut. Yes. It's thing. disgusting. I'm oh like, no wonder I so, feel like crap. So what happens is, is your gut. Eat organic is yeah. one of the things. Think of yourself as a tube, okay? Okay, you ever see those little games, like there's like these little things that kids buy that it's like a plastic tube. And, and like you can, yeah, it, there's like a hole on the inside, kind of uh -huh. like a donut. Yeah, and then you can like pull Right, it apart, and pull yeah. it out. So think of your body that way. Like everything inside of our body uh, we're using to, to keep ourselves alive. We're constantly making new cells and new tissue and, you know, it, things are constantly dying and rebuilding and so forth. Well, in order to build any of those cells, your body is taking in everything from the outside world. Well, we're taking it from the inside and also through the outside. So what you're putting on your skin goes in but also whatever you're eating and you're drinking. And so there's this tube that goes all the way down, right? Obviously your digestive tract. And down in your digestive tract, there's this cilia that keeps everything moving. Now, the purpose is, is that your body is designed to take all of the nutrients and the good things from your food, break it down, absorb it into the intestinal tract and so forth, and use it to rebuild your cells. But the, your skin and your inside of your body is also meant to protect the rest of the cells from the toxins in it. The problem is, is if you are constantly eating food that is inflaming you and you're taking antibiotics and you're taking ibuprofen and all of this stuff that we're doing that's so common in our culture, it gets so swollen. Have you ever had been like bit by like a, like a bee or something and, and you got swollen to the point where you're, you can feel your skin like almost hurting? Like, oh, it's so swollen. I feel like my skin's gonna like pop, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening to the inside of your intestine. And it can actually start to split. It actually starts to split open between the cilia because it's so swollen. Well, once that cilia and that lining of your intestine is meant to protect your body from the toxins that are in your food. They're, you can't escape it. They're, they're, they're just part of it. There are bacteria that's in there. There's the byproducts of the stuff that you're breaking down that your body is supposed to get rid of. But now, because it's broken and split between those cilia, now it's actually going into your body. So then what happens? Then your body starts to go, wait a second, I've got all these toxins. I need to swell up. Inflammation is our body's protective nature to protect itself. Well, now you're developing inflammation throughout your whole body. That's gonna lead to autoimmune conditions. I've developed autoimmune conditions. Um, if you don't take care of autoimmune conditions, the autoimmune conditions can start attacking other organs. So like if you don't, if you start developing um, hypothyroid, for example, or uh, thyroid, um, Hashimoto's, you don't take care of that, you can take your medicine. Like you can go and get your T3 and your T4 and be like, I got Hashimoto's, doctor gave me T3, T4, I'm good. No, you're not. If you are not addressing your gut health, which is the root cause of what's going on there, that autoimmune condition, your symptoms have fixed in the thyroid, but that autoimmune condition is now going to spread to other parts. So people who have thyroid, uh, Hashimoto's and other types of uh, autoimmune conditions could then develop other autoimmune conditions. So now you're developing lupus. You can be developing rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. What's the spectrum of that? If you don't take care of those autoimmune conditions, not only can just those uh, hurt you, but also you can start developing so much inflammation that your body creates cancer. So we're looking at a spectrum of issues. 
I don't want you to think, oh, I'm doing this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that, but you can stop it now. And that's the point of this episode is really is like, what can we all be doing to be taking better care of our gut so that we don't, if we don't have an autoimmune condition yet, we can prevent ourselves from getting an autoimmune condition. But if we do, like we can start reversing the damage. And so that's what I want to share with you guys is how, like, what can you do to prevent? And then if you do have anything, what you can reverse. So one of the things that I've learned <clears throat> from you and from the homeopathic doctor that I saw, um, Aubrey, was that to buy organic. And I remember thinking, like, organic's just expensive. Like, that's just the hoity-toity people buy organic. But then when you guys explained to me why organic is beneficial, like, it's all those chemicals and those sprays that eat my stomach lining and make it so that I get leaky gut. And all of, I'm like, oh, crap, I, it is worth a couple extra dollars yeah. for me yeah. and for my yeah. kids. Another question that I did want to ask you, though, I was told that your microbiome is generational, like it, it passes on. So like, and I, I want to know from our audience, because your story is a lot like mine as far as I just never fixed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I grew up allergic to milk, um, always on antibiotics, but also my grandma and my mom were always on antibiotics. And they, so what I've heard is that they passed their very little microbiome to me. Mm -hmm. And then, so I started out with very little in the yep. first place with yep. all of my allergies and then all of my ear infections, all of my antibiotics yep. that it was just like, put her on an antibiotic, put her on an antibiotic. And so that just like shrunk my microbiome even more so that I was always, always uncomfortable with food. Yep. Like it just, always bloated, always just feeling terrible. And mm -hmm. then I would just eat more because my stomach was always mm -hmm. yucky. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. I never felt good until. Yep. And you're lucky though, because you, you have stomach aches that give you the signal like my gut's not doing well. I talk with a lot of people that are like, I don't have belly issues, so I'm, I don't have to take care of my gut. That's not the case. We, we just happen to be canaries is what I would call us, where we're just very sensitive on, with the pain receptors there that give us a wake up call early, but there, most people don't. Most people feel perfectly fine, they don't have belly aches, and then next thing you know they got an autoimmune condition and they're going, what the heck happened? And then they go and get their gut health tested and find out it's been destroyed, but they didn't know because they didn't feel any pain. So if you do have pain, I think that's a blessing because you could get more likely to catch things early um, where some others would not ever know until they already have a full-blown disease. But going back to what you're saying, yes, a lot of it is, like the bi microbiome that we have is picked up from the dirt that's around us, like all the things that, that we live in. And so your body is meant to like bring from your ancestors, right, to help prepare you for, for survival. And what happens is when we pass through the birth canal uh, and you pass through that birth canal, the bacteria from your mother's anus basically crawls up and gets into the baby's mouth and the baby swallows it and that's how the microbiome is passed into the baby. It's a, it's a natural. What about a C-section? That's it, that's the issue. So they have, they have started doing research and, and following babies that were born out of C-section and babies that are born out of C-section are much more susceptible to gut health problems because they didn't have all of that bi microbiome passed down to them. All my babies are C-section babies. So I know, okay, I already have gut health issues. I had C-sections for all my babies. I need to have my, my kids on probiotics right away. And, I, and I'm also very, like, I think Benjamin may have had an antibiotic once, maybe twice. I don't think Scotty has ever had an antibiotic or not. So antibiotics are, are a beautiful invention, but they've been overused. And really my big advice to you is use an antibiotic if you are in a like life or death situation or you just had like dental surgery, something really big, okay, do it. But other than that, sinus infections, ear infections, eye infections, skin infections. There are so many natural antibiotics out there that you can use that are very effective. Silvers and different types of herbs that work wonderful and that don't destroy your microbiome. So stop the cycle of antibiotic use right now with your kids, with yourself, unless you're in a dire situation. The next would be to start taking probiotics. Mm -hmm. A high multi-strain um, uh, probiotics, when I say multi-strain, it's like you're not just taking culturel, which is like, I think it has like lactobacillus in it. That's great. Can you put it That's in only show one. Notes what sure, yeah, I'll give an example of one. There's many good brands out there. One of my favorites is Seeking Health. They have a couple of different ones, but like the one that I use is like 12 different strains billions and billions, and you just make sure and you just take it every day, right? My second piece of advice would be to cut, to really uh, either go to the doctor and get an allergy test to really find out what your allergies are, and you may not even know, like you might have had no idea. But if you don't wanna go and do that, all you can, you can easily figure out a lot of those things by like 
going on what I had mentioned, like a 30-day detox diet, and then slowly bringing food back in and wait, like kind of like when you had your babies and you started giving them food, you give them a food and you gotta wait like three days before you give them a new food, you do the same thing to yourself. So you go on a 30-day detox, really strict diet, then start bringing foods back in and seeing how your body reacts. Wow. One food at a time, and you'll start noticing, whoa, you I ate wheat and I still. Yeah, I would wait before? three days before you start bringing back wow. at, that back in. But for the most part, like, if you just clean up your diet and really stick to clean eating and reducing your sugar's wheat. Sugar's a bad thing. Yeah, redu oh yeah, sugar causes all sorts of inflammation. Yeah, so sugar, reducing your sugar, reducing your wheat, reducing your corn and soy. There's so many awesome new products out there that have um, come into the market that are great replacements. Like, I love my tortillas. I love my bread, <laughs> right? But, and I love my pasta, but I switched to rice, uh, like rice pastas, gluten-free pastas or more vegetable-based pastas like palmini or shirataki noodles. My tortillas, I use um, cassava tortillas or almond flour tortillas. They taste but great. like cauliflower stuff? Yeah. Maybe a lot of cheese alternatives Yeah, now. a lot of the cauliflower, they put cheese in there to kind of make it so oh, that it's they? like, then you got the dairy thing. But the cassava or the almond flour tortillas, they taste great. And you had almond yogurt or coconut yes, yogurt, and those were delicious. They're great, and you got coconut yogurt, you got almond yogurt. You can even switch to like um, goat yogurt um, because goat and sheep don't have A1 casein protein, which is the protein that is in dairy, that's in cow dairy, that causes all that inflammation. You guys can hit me up for some goat. Milk yeah. And goat yeah. yogurt. My so, goats are about to have babies. Yeah. So wow. if you really like dairy Let's and you're do like, it. I don't want to give up my cow cheese, if you just even just switch to goat or sheep, you're gonna do your gut so much better. I've never had goat. As... I'm about to. It's I've a had little... sheep. And you sheep had is actually, I love goat. Sheep is actually goat. delicious. Mm -hmm. Sheep milk my... and sheep cheese is yeah. fabulous. It is delicious. And, and Trader Joe's has some good options. Yeah. Um, uh, in my house, I got some for you. I get yeah. uh, from Costco, like instead of Parmesan cheese, which is cow cheese, um, I'll go to Costco and I get their um, Pecorino Romano. Anytime you see Pecorino, that means sheep. So that's always a what? good, yeah, so that's a good sign, like, oh, that's a sheep cheese. So you can get that, and it tastes just like Parmesan. You so it's better on, Instagram, on your gut. Instagram, one of these times yeah. you go to the grocery store. And yeah, show us. Show and just show us, us all the food, yeah, that right? That would be really good. So I would basically do all of those things. So cut out all of those inflammatory foods, swap them out. You're gonna feel depressed if you just cut them out and you're like, I just, what am I gonna eat? Mm -hmm. A lot of like, that's how I kind of felt at first. It's like, what am I gonna eat? Yeah. Don't think of it that way, think of a swap. So it's not like I'm not gonna eat wheat, it's going, well, I'm gonna swap wheat for almond flour or almond flour tortillas. I'm gonna swap the wheat uh, pasta for the rice you know, pasta, those types of things. Um, for meats, I would really cut down meat. Tons of meat would really mess things up. Plus, most of the meats that we're eating, like the cheap just grocery store meats, are just filled with hormones and all this other stuff that's causing more of that inflammation. Um, so I would switch to higher quality meats like grass-fed, grass-finished beef, pasture-raised chicken or organic free-range chicken, wild-caught fish, not farm-raised fish. You have to read closely, but they are out there, and I wouldn't eat a ton. Honestly, like two to four ounces of meat a day is all that you really need in order for your body to be healthy, um, and you can make up the rest in proteins in your, in your, you know, with your diet. So with your diet, probiotic. Um, the next I would recommend is most people need a fiber supplement. Uh, and if you have a typical American diet, unless you're eating like tons and tons of spinach salads and broccoli and cauliflower, which I encourage you to do, you most fiber. of us need to have a little extra fiber. So taking like, um, you know, like Metamucil, just a couple of teaspoons a day to just add to the fiber that you're already eating will help keep things flowing. Um, and then I would take glutamine, uh, which is a supplement that kind of adds a little slime to the inside lining of your intestine that kind of cools it down and heals some of that inflammation and makes things kind of move a little better so it's not all stuck in there. And turmeric. Turmeric is a wonderful natural anti-inflammatory. I use turmeric yeah. on everything. I love so turmeric. start eating the turmeric too. Mm -hmm. uh, ideally with black pepper, you get turmeric with black pepper because it helps your body absorb it better. What do you, how do you eat it? It's just a supplement. Um, you know, you can just, when you, when oh, you go like and, and buy the supplement, pill? yeah, you just look for it with turmeric with black pepper. And the black pepper helps your body absorb it so you can get more in it. That'll help reduce that inflammation as well. And then just take some time. Like eat better. I do, do your fiber, your probiotic. A, day, a you capsule do? of turmeric a day. I take like ten different vitamins. Yeah, like I remember on one I of those garlic. episodes. Like I do a lot of things. Garlic is ginger. so good for you. Ginger, like ginger garlic. is such a good yeah. natural um, anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. um, in Haiti, we have ginger tea every morning, and I haven't. We don't. I don't have time to do it here. So I just did my grandma and my aunt send me a capsule of mm -hmm. turmeric and mm. ginger, and I just take them every morning. It really does good for the. 
Ah, yeah. Body, the digestion. Oh, yeah. So uh, I have a blog on that blog, and if you just go to mamaguts.com, um, you should be able to look. There's a ton of blogs that I've written on recipes and just diet and just all sorts of stuff that's all on gut health. And I also have a download on there. So if you wanted to do a detox uh, and you wanted to cut some food out of your diet and then reintroduce, I have a download on there where you can decide like how hardcore you want to be. I have like minimum requirements. Like if you're going to do something like basic, like here's like the basics that I would start off with. And if you want to go deeper, then you can go like next level on some things that you can cut out and some supplements that you can bring in to, um, to heal your gut. So that's there for you guys as well. And then in the show notes, I can put down some of those supplements. Yeah. And uh, then you're going to yeah. take us grocery shopping with you one day on Instagram. All right. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Um, I want to hear from our audience who grew up in the eighties, <laughs> like, us, like Teresa and I, did you guys like, yeah. Tons of milk, always milk. I was allergic to milk, but milk is in literally everything. So mm -hmm. it was kind of like just build a tolerance to it is basically mm -hmm. what it was for me. Um, tons of antibiotics. So I want to hear who yep. who was from that generation of the antibiotics and the dairy. Yep. <laughs> and then take that test. I think that's really cool. I'm going to try yeah, it. The baking, the baking soda, soda yeah. test. Yeah, we and should and, and we didn't even talk about that, but you know what she was doing is she started adding in um, higher hy chloric acid um, to help add more acid back into her stomach. It really and did so, make a big difference. Yeah. Like I was able to, because I told you it was so embarrassing, like I was burping all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm, and I'm yeah. like, why am I all of a sudden like this burping master, right? And like burp the ABCs. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so after that, like I was able to not get sick after I yep. ate. It was awesome. Yep, it's powerful. And uh, it, it, I'll put an enzyme in there that's really important too, that's gonna help you with all of that digestion and just helping your body like actually absorb the nutrients that you're eating so that you can actually use it to rebuild your cells like it's supposed to. So all of that will be there and I'll take you guys on that grocery shopping. So I'm excited. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Teresa. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap for this episode of The Brave Talk Show. If you're watching us on YouTube, there are more episodes that you will love on that window to the right and we will see you on the other side. Bye. I have some questions for you Hey brave girl